Now everybody knows the orcs, right? Middle Earth and all that crap. <laughs> not these orcs. Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of weirdos in love that love doing some celebration videos together. We're totally weirdos. <laughs> yes, we are. And we are celebrating 40k subscribers with a Warhammer 40k Double Trouble Thursday. You might be sensing a theme to this video. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we are doing Warhammer 40k. Um, what the F is Warhammer 40k? And uh, it's by Luton09. And we are doing uh, later today Astartes. Astartes, Astartes, uh, which is something that a lot of people have been uh, looking for us to do. So to celebrate, and we have an international community here on Definitely Not Definitive. Yeah, we do. And we're going to celebrate with Skull this time. Goal! So we want to say a huge thank you. Obviously, this is a, a celebration of 40K, but really it's an appreciation video for all of you out there. Yes. I hope that you are enjoying the footage that you're watching. I hope that we're able to make you smile and brighten your day because you all absolutely do that for us each and every day. And I'm going to get like all sappy and stuff, so I'm going to try to keep it short, but it's just that thing of connecting with all of you, the positivity that you bring, the enthusiasm that you bring, the energy that you bring, that we mm -hmm. get to share in with you. It's changed my life. I'm, I mean, I know that sounds so sappy and cliche, but it really has. We stumbled into this and connecting with all of you has just really meant the world. Yeah, we didn't expect to connect with as many people as we uh, have so far on this, um, you know, journey of ours. And thank you so much for all your comments and all your support and just, you know, being the best community out there and, uh, you know, all your positivity. We just, we love it. Thank you so much and cheers. Cheers. Skull. Skull. Some people out there in the Warhammer community might be a little disappointed that we're not starting with Bricky's uh, Warhammer videos. They're a little bit longer. So like there's two one hour basically uh, videos. This this one, one, the reason we chose it is because I just love the name, what the F is, Warhammer 40K. <laughs> it's like, that's what was going through my head when we watched our all like trailers for Warhammer. We judge books by their covers and their titles. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And, uh, and so this one, you know, we really wanted to get to a star taste, but we wanted to get a little bit more, um, a little bit more of the lore before we watch that one. And so, you know, we will do Brickies eventually. I'm a history nerd. I want the background. I want the lore. I want the context. And then I want to dive into the, the bigger, more elite stuff that you all are familiar with, but, but we're beginners. We, yeah. we need to like, you know, get our feet wet a little bit before we can dive in. All right, here we go. Let's do it. You will not be missed. Oh. Wow, what an intro. Yeah. I don't know. It's very dark and ominous. I'm going to drink more champagne. Welcome to the first in my series of primers focused on the universe of Warhammer 40,000. If you're watching this, you may well be brand new to the all-encompassing hobby we call 40k. But what is it? What's it all about and why should you consider looking into it any further? Well, for one reason in recent times, people's appetites have been reawakened to highly immersive TV series like Game of Thrones or movie franchises with a decent backstory. 40k goes considerably far beyond these examples. It is one of the biggest miniature war games in the world and features an ever-evolving story that expands in written text text, video games, and of course its original and arguably most important feature, the miniatures and its tabletop game. It is created and owned by Games Workshop, a UK-based company producing tabletop games and associated materials. Now I will cover elements of 40k as briefly as I can today, but I won't skimp on detail just for the sake of time. It's as to the point as I can make it, but if you want to know more about specifics here on my channel I've covered in detail some of the core background areas of the game which is continuing to expand. I'll also be continuing to produce these short primers to the world of 40k and I'll also be continuing to make the longer form content which is featured regularly here on the channel. Often referred to by those already consumed by Warhammer 40,000 as the hobby, 40k is not one thing to one person. It is a highly detailed narrative spanning multiple empires from world-ending galactic campaigns to lowly individual soldier stories. 
It is a series of usually middle of the road video games with a few standout gems, it's a hobby of addictive miniature painting and crafting, and it is a tabletop war game now established for over 30 years. It has spawned a variety of smaller games designed to be played without acquiring a huge army, games like Space Hulk, Necromunda and Kill Team, and these often require only say 6 to 10 pieces per side and are very accessible for new players, a for a standard guys. Warhammer 40,000 tabletop may require larger armies with many many pieces. Now before we come to the lore, it is worth looking at the original tabletop game as this will give you a better understanding of just everything about it. If you've never seen or encountered a tabletop game, this is not important, it's actually very simple. Usually two players will engage in a battle laid out on a table at your home or a gaming venue. The area of play will be set with terrain pieces often crafted and painted by the players and they will alternate turns moving their miniature soldiers or vehicles and will resolve engagements through random dice rolls according to specific rules and combinations of preset unit stats. There may or may not be a mission for one side to achieve and these games can be highly strict or open to player interpretations. Players will usually paint their miniature soldiers for use on the battlefield and these can be in a variety of factional designs and colours. Some people prefer their involvement in 40k to be focused entirely on this hobby of painting, designing and modifying these miniature units. And this part of 40k can be just as all consuming as the lore or the tabletop. Some may choose to split their time between each part or devote all their hobby time to one piece of the whole 40k hobby, be that the lore, tabletop or the painting designing element. Now comes the challenge for me, summarising 40k. So Warhammer 40,000 is set in the distant future, a future beset by galactic war from a skirmishing city turf war level through to planetary conquest and system-wide campaigns fought through its space and planets. It is far more pessimistic than most other deep lore universes and also regularly borders on what you would describe as space horror. Now 40k is primarily focused around humanity which has through many thousands of years achieved an unimaginable level of technology and then lost the majority of this zenith through a devastating war. Humanity after this ancient war was left broken and fragmented across the galaxy. It would be later reunified by one godlike individual known as the Emperor of Man, and he would set in motion the new order for mankind known as the Imperium of Man. But a devastating civil war known as the Horus Heresy would befall mankind before the Emperor could complete his goals for humanity, and he would instead now become a living corpse enshrined on Earth or Terra. Humanity would become shattered by this civil war and after a slow painful recovery it has become for the longest time a stagnant civilization. Suffocating under its own bureaucracy, the Imperium has begun making the smallest steps toward advancement in the most recent days of its history, but it still stands as a strange juxtaposition of ancient tech that is beyond the comprehension of many of its citizens, it is a weak and precarious civilization simultaneously able to wield immense military power. Humanity itself through thousands of years of conflict with alien races who are more often than not excessively hostile has become a highly xenophobic race. It views almost all other races as needing to be exterminated and has almost no morals or ethics as to how this is to be achieved. The galaxy spanning empire of humanity is essentially a totalitarian state that worships the emperor of man. The imperium of man has large if not complete control over its citizens including many aspects of their lives, economy, social life, education, private lives, science and indoctrination into its ideology. Any who are not seen to be a follower of the Emperor may and will be persecuted as heretics and this is often largely open to interpretation and leads to large scale abuses of power and executions. The Imperium uses this deeply entrenched worship and Imperial ideology to control and mobilise mass populations of its citizenry for its armies like the Imperial Guard and Imperial Fleet. It also will utilise its citizens to fulfil whatever role is needed. These roles can and often are fairly unpleasant, especially when the rule of law is often severe and absolute. Humanity also wields in its arsenal the Emperor's greatest gift, the military sledgehammer known as the Imperial Astartes. These are the iconic space marines, genetically enhanced superhuman warriors who represent the pinnacle of human modification and military power. Their forces have access to some of the most powerful weapons and force multipliers humanity wields. Much of this tech is ancient and requires careful care and repair by specialists dedicated to retaining this critical knowledge. But as powerful as humanity is, even with its small progression in its most recent times, it still stands on the edge of annihilation by various alien races or entities. 
humanity somehow has survived to this point despite being on an almost permanent risk of complete destruction and forced extinction. Within the lore this has nearly happened on multiple occasions and what is left of humanity now in the Imperium of Man are the remnants of those survivors. A highly ignorant, fearful people in a Pretty fairly nice. constant state of decay where critical Pretty technological information is often lost. The Imperium and Humanity's primary goals are to locate the lost technology from the zenith period of mankind, known as the Dark Age of Technology, otherwise referred to as the Golden Age. It also focuses upon the continued defence and expansion of its territories, and of course the extermination of all alien races, known collectively as the Xenos. Because humanity has become so violently and ignorantly xenophobic in the far future, it also has no qualms about committing planetary levels of genocide. If you're not human and don't worship the Emperor, then you are the enemy, a heretic and must be exterminated. Diplomacy is almost not a thing for the Imperium, and the usual recourse is to just shoot on sight. In Jesus. fairness though, there was a time where humanity had attempted a more diplomatic approach, but this over time has just disintegrated, with most of its contact with aliens resulting in some kind of conflict. It now simply believes all other life must be extinguished, or at the very least dominated and enslaved for work or experimentation. These cases are usually quite rare. There are six other races that are seen as the enemies of humanity. Any of these factions can be played by you within the tabletop game of 40k or models for collecting and painting. Some players will dedicate themselves entirely to one faction, building it up, fleshing it out to the limit of their model making ability, and others that? may have Survival. multiple armies of different factions. The Necrons are a very ancient oh, race, strange creatures that appear like metallic skeletons. They are actually formed of living metal. They span the galaxy and are in a continuing state of awakening from their tombs after many thousands of years of sleep. They seek to rebuild their empire and dominate the galaxy. One of their key abilities is that of reanimation. They can reassemble themselves after death and fight on. They are also generally mindless automatons. How this came to be is another story. Now, Games Workshop has seen fit to recently rename some of its units, largely it seems for legal reasons, but since forever this faction has been known as the Eldar. More recently it is known as the Adari, but basically it's the Eldar. These are derived from the elves of many more fantasy games and are basically wow. space elves. Despite this quite simplistic analogy, the Eldar have a rich and tragic lore. Because of past disasters that have left the Eldar with no homeworlds to speak of, they now travel the galaxy in vast ships known as craft worlds. The Eldar wield powerful weapons, but are generally physically weak, and they also have immense arrogance towards other races. <laughs> their defining feature, and to some degree their biggest flaw, is that the Eldar are very powerful when it comes to psychers and psychic abilities drawn from the warp. The Dark Eldar are essentially space pirates who live lives of excess and sadistic torture porn. Anyone who looks like they're about to be captured by the Dark Eldar is rarely something that you would want to contemplate and suicide would generally be significantly preferable. Oh, oh god. That was a quick a little faction of many faces and contradicting goals. Chaos is as its name describes, and it originates from the parallel dimension known as the Warp. And this dimension is a reactive plane of existence that absorbs the most powerful emotions and desires of mortal creatures. The reactive immaterium would lead to the birth of entities of godlike power, the Chaos Gods. They each focus on specific mortal desires. Korn is the god of blood, representing war, rage, and hatred. Zinch is the changer, representing ambition, scheming, conspiracy, and sorcery. Nurgle is the plague god, representing mortality, morbidity, and despair. And Slanesh is the god of lust greed, excess, pleasure, pain, and perfection. Yeah, the continuing it. desires and emotions of the galaxy's inhabitants sustain these entities. However, they also reach out into the mortal realm through their manifested entities made from the warp known as demons. Oh. And these hellish creatures are enough to send ordinary citizens insane on sight. They're backed by traitors to the Imperium, the corrupted Chaos <laughs> Space Marines. The gods of chaos and their agents can also infect the minds of mortals, and often cults and worshippers may spring up on planets across the Imperium. This is again one reason why the Imperium of Man is so ruthless about purging heretics. While chaos itself in the material world appears as one enemy that simply wages war, it is in fact in an internal conflict within itself. Each of the Chaos Gods fights for domination over the others, and this occupies the majority of their focus and energy. 
Each god's ultimate goal is complete domination of the Immaterium, a goal which seems unattainable and dangerous to their own existence were it to come to pass. Chaos is one of the most varied and pervasive forces in 40k and has many forces operating under its banner, some dedicated to a specific god, others that simply worship Chaos undivided. The orcs. <laughs> Now everybody knows the orcs, right? Middle Earth and all that crap? <laughs> Not these orcs. These are more Mad Max Fury Road, crossed with British football hooligans, and then you're in the right ballpark, uh, also in space. Those orcs are likely a genetically designed species focused for hyper-violence, and to be almost impossible to permanently exterminate. They are as hilarious as they are dangerous, and their entire society focuses around casual violence. The orcs though are also probably the most sunny and optimistic of all races, strangely. Yeah. Their genetic they disposition kind of sets them to see things as generally good and enjoyable, especially when it comes to fighting. And they never really see failure as a negative, because it means you just get to have another go later. They also operate more on instinct by design than learned knowledge and their willpower becomes more powerful the more orcs are present, meaning when they are collected en masse, they can literally will things to be true by collective belief. They also have a strange ability to just cobble together vehicles and weapons from scrap. They also have no real governing structure. Leaders are chosen by progressively being better at smashing their rivals' heads in until an orc eventually reaches the position of being a war boss. When orcs collect in huge numbers, they may launch a massive campaign of raiding and attacking anything that's not orc by launching a warg, essentially a huge, no-holds-barred slaughter fest. Anything in the way, best dig in or get the hell out. Wow. I'm kind of team orc. The Tau are one of the newer races and are fast learning that the galaxy is not a friendly place. Mm. The Tau operate similarly to the orcs on a more optimistic level, but that's about as far as their common ground with the orcs goes, because the Tau exist on the fringe of the Imperium and are unusual as they actively encourage other races to join their cause. They collectively follow an ideology known as the greater good. This is their guiding principle that working together is better than working against one another, as this leads to a stronger, more peaceful society. However, anybody who disagrees with this best prepare for war. To be fair though, the Tau do usually attempt significant levels of diplomacy before declaring their target a lost cause. The Their military is largely focused around technology and ranged combat, something often mocked and derided by their enemies. The Tau themselves are comparatively weak and use other races absorbed into their faction to fight in close quarters. Tyranids are an unusual exception to all previous Xenos. They do not operate on an ideology, a political structure, or debatably a single leader. They are the most Xenos of Xenos and have begun a steady invasion of the galaxy. They are presumed to have arrived from beyond the borders of the known galaxy and are hostile in the extreme. They do not wield any technology as we would understand it, or their ships, forces and weapons are biological in origin. Tyranids are one of the most nightmarish factions within 40k. Their singular goal is biomass, that is to strip planets of all biological and mineral materials, leaving them barren dead husks. They assault planets with extreme prejudice and will not cease their assault unless they are damaged to a point where their acquisition of biomass becomes negative to that being expended. They use all material to birth their forces on their vast bioships and recycle their own units by dissolving them back into the pool of biomass which then they draw to create anything else they may need. They absorb the genetics of yeah. all that they encounter and use this to evolve and create more hostile and efficient creatures and biomachines to achieve their goal. They may also seed and infect planets ahead of time to often use the planet's own inhabitants against themselves when the Tyranids arrive to destroy the world. The Tyranids are controlled en masse by something called the Hive Mind. This is essentially a broadcasted collective consciousness that enables them the powerful skill of being able to operate as one, but made up of millions of individual entities across a planet. The Tyranids are horrific, seemingly unstoppable, and have already wrought terrible destruction upon many others across the galaxy. Many rumour that their already devastating campaigns are only the initial scouting parties to the Milky Way galaxy, and if this is true, the Tyranids could be the ones to end everything. Oh, great. Lovely. While not wanting to touch on the subject of like psychic Galactus. power too strongly in this video, Galactus. many factions mm -hmm. in 40k feature what are known as psychers. These are essentially individuals who can wield what you might describe in other universes as magic powers. Some factions have strong psychers and others have none, and these powers are drawn from the parallel dimension known as the warp 
or the Immaterium. Individuals who can use these powers do so at considerable risk as the warp is an unstable and dangerous realm. The relationship between real space and warp space is a complicated one and can affect many aspects of life in the far future, but this is something best covered in another video. The takeaway for you today is that Warhammer 40,000 is a world of vast scale warfare and complex interfactional and internal factional power struggles. 40k is by its very nature often absurd to the extreme. Sometimes this can be somewhat detrimental to its own narrative because when everything is supersized and extreme in the extreme, suddenly everything looks kind of the same and then it becomes arguably less impressive. However, 40k just owns its own absurdity and it's something that you just have to roll with and suspend your disbelief. For many who are obsessed with 40k, the hyper-violent, xenophobic, genocidal nature of its occupants is largely a source for much dark humour. Most people that are into Warhammer, they don't take it too seriously. But it is also fun to take yeah. things in 40k very seriously, because it contains so much detail. But simultaneously, there are many memes and pure nonsensical comedy that comes from 40k because of just how extreme it is. The classic It Sounds Like Heresy being one such example whereby anyone who dissents from the official line of thinking is declared a heretic and executed on the spot, <laughs> that I enjoy using all the time in the comments. And the key theme of 40k is purely about war. The law is a vast, all-encompassing backdrop that stands on its own, but 40k for itself is all about the galactic wars that are unending. It's focused this way because it represents the background for a tabletop war game that is surprisingly about factional war. 40k itself operates on a fairly healthy dose of irony. Much of the events and organisations forces and individuals often are the result of half-truths or pure indoctrination, and some of those that are held up as heroes are not what they appear to be, and as usual the context of events are very important, but many things can end up being actually quite subjective. The fact that the Imperium itself has through its devout worship of the Emperor now has its state religion embedded in almost everything it does, which is hilarious when you consider the Emperor of Man set out to eradicate religion from humanity entirely. Warhammer 40k draws from a lot of historical events and ideologies. It also borrows heavily from other settings like Dune, 2000 AD, Lovecraftian influence, obviously Tolkien, and even older texts like Milton's Paradise Lost and the Divine Comedy with Dante and the Inferno. Huh, 40k wow. has continued to be fleshed out over time and it shows no signs of abating. If anything, it's moving forward at a faster pace than ever. It is a universe that has consumed me for some 30 years and I highly recommend that you allow the darkness of the far future to enter your life. You may live to regret it, but you will undoubtedly enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys as always. If you have a suggestion for what my next 40k primer should be, tell me in the comments. If you want to learn more about Warhammer 40,000, check out the video on the end screen to the left or my collected playlist of content to the right. This is Luton, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so we got a lot more information on that. What'd you think so far? Okay, well first I have to start off by just saying, I love Luton. I love the way that he did this video. He, I mean, it sounded like a BBC radio announcer and mm -hmm. everything was just very even keeled yep. and factual. And then we get to the orcs. <laughs> and suddenly we see his personality creep in, he's making jokes. I yeah. mean, you could tell that he was excited about this particular race within this world. And then we went back to BBC and then we had the final thoughts, which again, his personality came in. I just, I love the way that he did it. I, yeah. I'm like, bravo. I'm very impressed. Uh, so him and, and Bricky were two of the people that uh, are in, like, were kind of told for Warhammer. I guess Luton is kind of a little bit more uh, deep into the lore uh, than Bricky is. Bricky's a little bit more humorous. So I don't know how this is going to work out for a reaction because like, because he was talking so much and it's like kind of so fast, there wasn't a whole lot of us, like, you know, that we could say... Because we didn't want to miss anything. Didn't want to miss it, yeah. Um, I, I think that, yeah, like, I, him liking the orcs, I, I, it showed because it really, like, I really like the orcs now. <laughs> and just in the way that they, uh, you know, kind of have a positive outlook, but also are all about kind of, like, bloodshed and mayhem. Um, and, you know, don't really have a, a real leader. It's like whoever, like, smashes heads the best is the leader. But then they all can, like, come together and, like, they're powerful. They're most powerful when they're they're all as one. Like, there's nothing they can, yeah. can't do. That they can, like, will stuff into, yeah. into being is, whoa. I think that's, I think that's amazing. Um, I like the Eldar as well. Uh, we are the ones that we really liked when we saw the... Um, trailers, all the trailers for Warhammer yeah. 40k, they were the ones that kind of stuck out to us. I really like the Tau, and I don't, 
I'm I'm drawing a blank. I can't remember if we've really seen very much of them in previous trailers because they don't stick I out in either. my mind yeah. as popping up before. I remember the Elder from before, mm -hmm. and I still like the Elder. Um, but I just the way that they describe the Tao is um, being similar to the Orcs in that positive mindset and a little bit more yeah. optimistic outlook. But then also they actually tried diplomacy and like the goodwill towards man and all that kind of jazz before yeah. having to deal with battle and war, which probably makes them not the favorite in a world of war and bloodshed, but I like them. I also liked at the end when he's talking about how like kind of calling people a heretic and heresy is uh, something that uh, people in Warhammer 40k <laughs> like to do in the comments. Because like in our Warhammer 40k uh, trailer reaction, people were doing that in the comments. Like because we didn't like the emperor, like oh like we all got to worship this emperor. Oh screw that. Like, <laughs> It's like, oh, she sounds like a heretic. Get her! <laughs> so, what can I say? I'm a heretic. That was cool, and I, I like that um, people have said that there is kind of is no good person in uh, Warhammer 40k. Like, everyone's dark and everyone's bad. We got a little bit more of the Startees, uh, what, what they're about. So I'm excited for our next, you know, part of this Warhammer 40k Double Trouble Thursday um, yeah. later today. But I also thought about this just in terms of... I definitely saw a Tolkien, obviously, mm -hmm. very much throughout it. I thought it was very interesting, the ties to um, Paradise Lost and Dante's Inferno and yeah. all that stuff. Um, I, I will admit that I have not read either of those. I am more <laughs> familiar with them from the other people speaking about them and referencing them than the exact text. But I found that very interesting, just how much is being pulled from to create this alternate world of... Mm -hmm war and mayhem and darkness in the future. It was also something that you said about, you know, it seems like there's really nothing redeeming about man and how kind of everybody in the future is va variations of bad guy status. Yeah. Um, and I just thought they really set that up well with the opening because they talk about how dark and desolate and hopeless and terrible the future has become and Sure enough, I think if you're living within that world and just surrounded by all of that negativity and horror and toxicity of everything, um, then it's probably going to be pretty hard to be a bright, sunshiny person in the middle of all of that. So yeah. for the orcs and the Tau who actually retain some optimism, they seem like definitely the anomaly. I think uh, another one of my favorite sort of factions is the, the Chaos. I thought they were super interesting. Like, it's not some people I want to cheer for, but I, I just feel like that that has something like that is extremely fascinating to me. Like the whole so, whole sort of like God element to it, and they each represent kind of different uh, vices as as that that people uh, tend to have. And um, if like I was to make a Warhammer 40k sort of like movie or series or whatever, I think like that's what I'd be focused on. I'd be focused on the chaos mm. and kind of like them influencing man and like and, and, and you know I guess they influence other races as well but I was like that's kind of where I would I would start um Interesting. you know so I, I that one like really kind of had my mind going in a million different places and like that's when I want to like learn more about it. yeah I would agree I definitely want to learn more about them as well I I don't think I quite had the inspiration from them that you did mm. in terms of like thinking about where this could go type of thing but more like Whoa, they're so different from everyone else. Like, yeah. I think I think I'm behind the curve. I'm a little bit slow on this one because I'm still like trying to wrap my head around around them and understanding all of that. Because like the way that they're produced and how they kind of come out of nothing and like I I just I my brain was like whoa like <laughs> I need to like rewatch that segment just so my brain can get wrapped around it. Yeah, and thanks so much for suggesting this. Um, like I said, we're gonna tr check out some of the Brickies uh, lore videos as well. Um, but you know. Later today, for our Double Trouble Thursday, we got a Startees, Startees, I can't, I, I don't know which one it is, I keep saying I'm going to remember whenever they say it, and I always forget about it. Uh, it's but, okay. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, thanks. <laughs> That's why I have him say everything. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for checking out our reaction to What the F is Warhammer 40k by Lutone 9 but just keep in mind. That it's definitely not definitive. And thank you everyone.